All right, so a quick test here with ChatGPT desktop app here on Mac OS. I'm going to hook up to and use iTerm with this. And I'll go into this little bubble mode here to see if this feels a little bit better. So I want to build my application here. Come over to the terminal, list out my files here. Let's see if it can help me build my application. And secretly, I've introduced a bug in the compilation process in the project file. And we'll see if it can help me troubleshoot that here. So, all right, to figure it out, it's a .NET project, so .NET build here. I would like to be able to send this over here and not need to copy and paste it, but let's put that over there right now. Uh-oh, something went wrong here. So, oh no, help. This is kind of an interesting workflow to not only be able to generate commands, but to look at the command output as you run the various commands, and then to be able to help you troubleshoot things. I think that's actually pretty darn useful. All right, so it's suggesting your Newtonsoft JSONs is a typo. The package name should be Newtonsoft JSON, which is correct. That is the bug I introduced. Let's come over here and edit that. I'm gonna just come in here, paste that over the top. That's what it suggested in case it made a mistake there. I'll save that. And then what is it saying to do now after I fix that? All right, and then try .NET build again. All right, so I'll run the .NET build there. I guess the only drawback is I'm used to clearing my command history as soon as I get done with like one or two different commands. So I wouldn't have a lot to show for it, but I guess if I start leaving some history, this could be helpful. All right, so now let's take a look at having it run our application. So how do I run my app? Okay, .NET run. I'll go ahead and clear the screen here. I'm assuming it has context with the previous content it saw. All right, so now let's ask it, how can I test the app? So it should be able to look at the command output here. I wonder if it can see both panes. I'm assuming it can. All right, so it's suggesting to copy that here. Oh yeah, it's got curl right here. I could copy and paste that. There you go, it works, great. So now let's ask it. Let's ask it a question here. How do I add a slash hello endpoint to the web app to return world here? So I switched over to, so I switched over to NeoVim here. It should be able to see that. All right, so add link open program CS. Open that up, but I'll say, oh no, I already have one. Oops, <laughs> forgot I left one of these in here. So let's get rid of that. Let's paste in what it suggested here. Oops, made that bigger for some reason. Oh, that's kind of neat. You can split the screen with that. Ooh, kind of freaking out there. Interesting. So let's just say I copy this in and I paste it. Let's say I put it right here. So I made the change. How do I save my file? See if it can help me out there with the fact that this is NeoVim. All right, good. Well, I don't want to quit, but yeah, I'll at least do the W part. All right, now let's come back over here. And then I need to say, okay, how do I update? Just ask it almost as if I'm an idiot here. How do I get that to work? How do I get to test the new changes? Stop the running app, control C. All right. Let's just type in something fake here and see if it figures out that control C is not working in that pane. I want to see if it can figure out that I push control C in the wrong pane theoretically. Should be able to tell me I'm in the wrong pane. Oh, come on, man. So what did I do wrong here? I told it to look at the output. <laughs> Looks like you inserted it as text rather <laughs> than using the keyboard shortcut. Darn it, you're not supposed to know what I actually did here. All right, we'll, we'll just kill that off for now and continue here. So control C, yep, and then it says .NET run here. Put that in again. And then, oh yeah, it's even got the curl call here to test it. So let's put that in here. All right, that looks like that works. So maybe if I go break something now, this is what I wanted to do earlier. And actually, let's get rid of this route and see what it does. Save that. I'll pretend I know what I'm doing for this part here. Uh-oh, what's going on here? This would be a good challenge for it. Okay, so I'm going to pretend I'm dumb here. Oops. And that I made the changes. All right. All right, so what's going on here? I don't see anything in the response. I'll play dumb. Okay, so double check your programs. Yes, file. All right, we'll just go over and do that. Actually, let's not show it the NeoVim this time. Let's just come over here and we'll cut out the contents of it. Ooh, let's ask it. How do I check the contents of it? Can it give me the cat command? 
Okay, it's actually suggesting Vim here. That's fine. All right, so let's do this. Cat and program CS. Can you see what I did wrong? That's to find, yep, be hello instead of hello. So here's the updated version. Come in here. Save that. Of course, if I come up here and restart this time, things will be working. And finally, we'll do one more test here. There you go. That works. All right, so I thought that would be interesting to use as kind of a terminal co-pilot. So I've had my little terminal completions forever here list where I could do things like list big files and ask it to give me a command for that to get something back. But in this case, this is actually going a step further because it's a nice mechanism whereby it can look at the command output from previous commands. It can look at the command output from the command I'm running. It could even verify I typed a command correctly, and it could help me with future commands as well, troubleshooting, you name it. So this is definitely an interesting workflow to be able to chat with somebody about what you're doing in your terminal and to get some help along the way.